Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo, then we can be assured that other nations will not treat America with respect, the respect that we deserve. The Amer what is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American Politics, back in with a new video, and today, we're gonna be doing a first on this channel. I know, we're doing something unique for once. What a surprise. We're gonna be doing my top five favorite U.S. Senate candidates for 2022. Now, I know I kind of talked about this yesterday, about, you know, a new, you know, America First type caucus in the U.S. Senate, but this is a more, you know, in-depth video of who I officially endorse again. There is others I endorse, but these are the top five that I personally believe, if you can, support these candidates, vote for them in your primaries, and, uh, yeah. Now, before I forget, of course, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit the little bell, and yes. Of course, go follow that mysterious Twitter account in the description down below. Go follow the L Tech, and, uh, yeah. All right, enough promotion stuff. Let's get right into it. So before we get to my top five, which I'm big brain enough to realize, oh, I should hide the tabs. I did this time. Um, there is two candidates that I have to give an honorable mention. These two barely miss the cut, not because they're bad on the issues. They're still great on the issues. Great candidates, and I firmly think they're going to win. Just compared to these other guys, I think the... These candidates, you know, compared to the issues pages, they're not, you know, as good as these other ones. They're still good, just I wouldn't say great, like these top five are. And of course, I'm talking about the Chewbacca, Kelly Chewbacca, who I firmly endorse, you know, I 110% endorse her. She's a great candidate. However, it is Alaska, and she has some, you know, libertarian-esque tendencies, but still, compared to Murkowski... She's great on the issues and would definitely be one of those America first type of candidates. Again, I 110% endorse her. Just I think, you know, she's a bit too libertarian on some issues for my liking. Now, the second honorable mention will be a shocker, but I have to... Oh, I hate to do this. I'm sorry. Football dude, I'm very sorry about this. And... Uh, it's just one of those things, though, that I firmly think she's going to be a great candidate. I think she's be a great senator. Just, I think, on the issues, other people have a slightly more nuanced, you know, platform. And they're not just, you know, football dude. Again, I love Herschel. I mean, he's a Chad, and I think he's going to win. Just, I wish that he had a bit better of an issues page. But, uh, yeah, he's still great, and I endorse him again 110%. Just, I think, you know, he barely misses that top five. And also, before we get into the top five, there is something I should explain. So this map here, I should have explained this at the start, there's three tiers of Republican senators. you got bad Republicans, pretty much all of them, good-slash-okay Republicans, you know, Ron Johnson and Marco Rubio types. I wouldn't, you know, say they're the best, but again, they're decent enough on voting, and they don't necessarily screw us over. While we got America first, which according to, you know, this map, there's only two, which I would think would be Kelly Shabaka and Herschel Walker. There is probably one other one, like a Josh Hawley type again. That's pretty much the only, you know, America first, you know, Senate candidates, or I should say senators. I mean, it's like, geez, I wish we had more, but again... America First Senators, you know, good on voting, you know, they're more populist or more outsider type candidates, and they have, you know, good voting record. And I personally believe these two will have a great voting record, but I think these other five, I just like them way more on the issues. So let's get right into it. Number five, in my opinion, has to be Ted Budd. Look, Ted Budd, I thought he was going to blow it there. I thought he was going to choke, right? He wasn't doing too hot there. I mean, he wasn't doing too good in the polling. I mean, he wasn't campaigning. I mean, this guy was sitting on his ass like other Senate candidates. Mm -mm, Mo Brooks. However, he finally decided, okay, I'm going to do a couple events, go shake some hands, you know, go meet some people. And well, he's benefited from it. He surged and he's running on Trump's endorsement. That's how you win primaries. You don't just 
oh, I, I'm going to tweet this tweet that um I'm endorsed by the Orange Man. No, run on it. You know, go shake hands. Go tell people. And that's what he's did. Plus, Pat McCroy, you know, kind of blew it. But point is, Ted Budd is one of the best North Carolina, you know, senators working in a long time. I mean, on the issues for... All the House delegates in North Carolina, he's probably the strongest voting record. Now, I don't think he's the best in North Carolina. I think Mark Robinson is eons above Ted Budd. But again, that is hard to beat Mark Robinson. So again, Ted Budd, great on the issues. And I think, again, one of those candidates I firmly believe will win in 2022. Now we got number four. And this is another one that... He's a personal favorite of mine, Adam Lake Salt. Now, I'm not going to say, you know, he's going to win by a lot, but I'm starting to think he's going to win by a lot. I mean, every single poll has that clown Cortez only in the low 40s. Well, Lake Salt, who, yeah, he has some name recognition, not as much as, you know, Cortez or Castro. How about a freaking know her name? Point is, Lake Salt is trending upwards. Well, the senator, I'm not going to try to say her name again, I'm going to screw it up, is trending down, down, and down. And on the issues, Lake Soul is the closest thing to a near perfect candidate, well, outside the top two, that you can get. He's talking about issues that matter, especially in Nevada. I mean, you look here, and yes, it is Cortez. I didn't screw it up, thank God. But... He's talking about issues that matter. I mean, he's talking about, hey, the price of groceries. That's gone up way more than it should have. You know, he's talking about those issues like, hey, we got to stop this. He's ta talking about, you know, cutting immigration, law and order, Second Amendment. And plus, it's not just, you know, this boomer con talk that, oh, my legal immigration is great. He's talking about, hey, immigration in general, you know, yes, illegal immigration is bad. But legal immigration, you know, definitely not the best. And he does talk about it. And again, he's against open borders. And he's one of those guys I firmly endorse. Again, 110% I endorse him. I think he's going to win. And I endorse Adam Lake Salt for the United States Senate in the great state of Nevada. Now we got number three. And this is a bit of, I think, you know, a twist. Uh, not many people are talking about this guy. Jackson, Jackson Lamere. This is somebody I firmly think has a serious chance of beating Lankford. You know, the clown. I mean, you look at his issues page. It is a great issues page. He talks about the issues. He has a great story. I mean, election integrity. He's not just saying, oh, the computers. It's just, hey, Let's have, you know, voter ID. It's like, that's it. And also immigration. Again, he has a great immigration platform. You know, abortion is 110%, you know, pro-life. I mean, he's like, he's a pastor. I mean, he has a great story. He's talking about issues that matter. I mean, oil and gas. The fact that some Republicans in Oklahoma don't even talk about oil. It's like, what? I mean, at least with Lamir, he's talking about Oil. I mean, it's like, why is it, you know, Lankford talking about it, like, at all? I mean, you would think he would go on Fox 24-7 and be like, yeah, we need to defend oil. Not once have I seen that. So, yeah, Jackson Lamier is a great story. I personally think is a great candidate. I think he's trending upwards. Will he win? Eh, I don't know. But if he does win, he gets rid of that loser Lamir, or not Lamir, Lamir will get rid of that loser, Lankford, which I hope happens. But again, it will be a kind of that struggle, but I do think he has a serious chance of doing it. He has some big endorsements in Oklahoma. So, uh, yeah. So that's number three, and these top two, they're going to piss off the right people. So number two, the comeback of all comebacks, J.D. Vance. Look, I am apologizing for me not being a diehard Vance fan at the start. Look, for a couple months, I thought Vance was going to be a loser in the United States Senate. However, he's won me over. 100%, he's won me over. His issues page is probably the second strongest issues page here. 
He talks about rebuilding America's manufacturing, fighting for small businesses, could serve traditional families, and abortion. He's talking about issues. But also, for immigration, he's talking about reducing not only illegal, but legal immigration to fight for American jobs. When was the last time you had a Republican say this stuff in the U.S. Senate? He also wants to put America first, not be involved in the shit show that is Ukraine. It's good stuff, and he's talking about it. it he's talking about issues that matter to voters. He's surging, and outside of that fake poll that Josh Mandel's campaign put out today about what Trump's endorsed in Vance, Vance is winning this race. He's going to be the next senator of the great state of Ohio easily. And on the issues, he, again, he's phenomenal. He's been running a great campaign. And also, he doesn't want to just be, you know, end abortion. It's, no, we also have to make the society pro-child and pro-family. Again, where have you seen a Senate candidate talk about this at all? So, uh, yeah, J.D. Vance, very good. But there is one more. And this is somebody that at the very start I said, endorse him, immediately vote for him. Before he even considered running, or I should say publicly considered running, I said to vote for this guy that I endorsed him. And of course, he's still my number one set of candidate for 2022, Blake Masters. What do I got to say about him again? I'm a fanboy of Blake Masters. Look, number one. This is his issue page. Look at this. Physical walls, surveillance technology, thousands more border patro uh, patrol agents, but also mandatory e-verify. Look at this. I mean, he's talking about, you know, getting rid of these garbage visa programs, you know, stopping this a million legal immigrant crap a year, fighting for American workers, and he has been running a phenomenal campaign. Look, strong national defense, not endless war. This is good stuff. He also has environmental pay, uh, environmental part of his platform. He's also been running on the issues that matter to voters. He's a chad on the issues. And again, he looks like a chad. I mean, look at him. This dude is my favorite candidate for 2022. And I don't care what those fake polls say. Blake Masters is going to be the next senator of Arizona, barring Trump's involvement. If Trump endorses Masters, that's 100%, he's the next senator. If he doesn't endorse Masters, but endorses Lamont, well, I'm sorry, Masters, Godspeed, but, uh, yeah, that won't go too pretty. And this, folks, is my current, you know, top, you know, seven, technically five, senator candidates for 2022. Of course, they're the America First, you know, caucus. Again, some of these guys you could say, well, they're not really considered America First, like Herschel Walker, Kelly Shabaka. Even so, I would say they have a significantly better voting record than these clowns in the purple. So, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash the like down below, subscribe, share it with your friends, hit the little bell, and yes, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys. In the next video, Godspeed to all of you.